Hello kids. In this video, we will learn about volume and its units. Raju and Bablu are playing cricket at Raju's house. Raju swung his bat and the ball went straight and fell into a jug which was completely filled. Bablu, let us take the ball out of this jug or else mother will scold me a lot. Raju, did you see that as soon as the ball fell in this jug filled with water, some water spilled out of it? Yes, Bablu, look, there is still water on the table. But uh, why did this happen? Raju, this happened because every object occupies some space which we call the volume of that object. I could not understand anything, Bablu. Can you explain me in more detail? Yes, but on one condition. You will wipe the water spilled on the table. <laughs> alright, alright. Agreed. Now will you please quickly explain to me what is volume? Alright. Okay. Raju, first you bring a measuring cup. Raju quickly brought a measuring cup from his room. Now Bablu took the ball out of the jug and filled it completely once again. Raju, now I will put this ball once again in this jug and this time when the water spills out, I will fill it in this measuring cup. Saying this, Bablu put the ball into the jug and once again water got spilled and he filled it in the measuring cup. Raju, can you tell me how much water is in the measuring cup? Looking at the surface of the water filled in the measuring cup, Raju said, 50 milliliters. Look Raju, the ball tries to make its space in this jug, so the water spills out of the jug. The more the ball tries to make its space inside the jug, the more water spills out of the jug. This is called its volume. Here, 50 milliliters of water is spilled out of the jug. So, we can say that the volume of the ball is 50 milliliters. Oh wow, Bablu. This is so much fun. Can I find out the volume of any solid in this way? Absolutely. So let's now try to find the volume of this marble. Raju took the ball out of the jug and filled it completely with water. Then Raju put a marble in the jug this time. If this time there is this much water in the measuring cup, can you tell what is the volume of the marble? If you want, you can stop the video and find the answer. The surface of the water filled in the measuring cup is at the 10 milliliter mark. Therefore, we can say that the volume of the marble is 10 milliliters. Oh, wow! The volume of this marble is 10 milliliters. Come on, Bablu. My mother is going to come. I will quickly wipe the water on the table and then we will go out and play cricket. Raju wiped the water on the table and the two friends went to play cricket. Children, in this video, we learned about volume and its units. Hello kids! In this video, we will learn about estimation and verification of volume of containers. Golu Panda has organized a unique competition in Champapur in celebration of his masala milk becoming very famous. Golu declared that whoever collects the most number of bottle caps of his masala milk bottles within 10 days will get a free masala milk bottle every day for a whole month. 
Everyone got excited and started collecting the bottle caps of Golu's masala milk bottles. Chanda is thinking, I can win this competition if I collect a hundred masala milk bottle covers within ten days. But I need a big pot to keep so many covers. Now, how do I find such a container? What is the volume of utensil required to collect 100 pieces? Just then, her eyes went to the measuring cup kept in her house. Oh yes! With the help of this measuring cup, I will first find out what the volume of 10 bottle caps is. Then, I will be able to easily find out the volume of 100 bottle caps. Chanda filled 50 milliliters of water in that measuring cup. Then she put 10 covers in that measuring cup and the water level came up to 150 milliliters. Well, first the water level was at 50 milliliters and now it has risen to 150 milliliters. That means the volume of 10 lids is 100 milliliters and if the volume of 10 lids is 100 milliliters then the volume of 100 lids will be 100 multiplied by 10 that is 1000 milliliters or 1 liter I have to take a container of 1 liter volume Chanda immediately took a box of 1 liter ghee and started to collect the bottle caps of Golu's masala milk. Time passed by quickly and soon it was the 10th day. All the people have collected different numbers of bottle caps. Children, if Babban has collected 30 bottle caps in his box and his box is only half full, can you tell what the volume of Babban's box is? If you wish, you can stop the video and think of the answer. The volume of 10 bottle caps is 100 milliliters and Babban has collected 30 bottle caps. This will mean the volume of the bottle caps collected by Babban is 100 times 3. That is 300 milliliters. But the volume of the bottle caps collected by Babban is half the volume of its container. Therefore, the volume of the box of Babban will be 2 times of 300 or 600 milliliters. Chanda collected the most number of bottle caps. She has gathered a hundred bottle caps and she finally won the competition. Now, Chanda will get one masala milk bottle free every day for a whole month. Look how happily Chanda is dancing. Children, in this video, we learned about Estimation and Verification of Volume of Containers In the next video, we will learn more about it by some interesting examples. Hello kids! In the last video, we learned about Estimation and Verification of Volume of Containers In this video, we will learn more about it by some interesting examples. Raju and Bablu are collecting coins. Raju, I will collect 1 rupee coins. I will collect 5 rupee coins, Bablu. Let us buy boxes from the market to collect coins in but Raju, how do we know what is the volume of the boxes we will need to collect 100 coins? And I don't even have a measuring cup at my house. Never mind, we can make our measuring cup. 
Eh, wow, how's that? Bablu, do you have an empty bottle or a jug? Yes, I'll get it right away. Look here, Raju. I have this 20 milliliter bottle and I have brought this jug too. But what will you do with them? I will tell you now. First, we will fill this empty bottle completely with water. Then, we will empty the bottle in this jug. Because the volume of the bottle is 20 milliliters, we can say that the jug currently has 20 milliliters of water. With a pen, we will mark 20 milliliters of water in this jug at that level of water. Bablu quickly made a mark of 20 milliliters at the level of water filled in the jug. Now, we will fill the bottle completely every time and empty it in the jug and each time a mark will be made on the jug by adding 20 points to the previous level of water. In this way, the marks on the jug will be made at 40, 60, 80 milliliters. See, Bablu, our measuring jug is ready. Now we can use it to find the volume of the coins. Oh wow, Raju! This is a wonderful technique. Let us find out the volume of 10 1 rupee and 10 5 rupee coins. Raju and Bablu used the measuring jug made by them. They found that the volume of 10 1 rupee coins is 20 milliliters and the volume of 10 5 rupee coins is 40 milliliters. Children, can you now find out what would be the volume of the boxes which can be used by Raju and Bablu in order to store 100 coins of 1 rupee and 100 coins of 5 rupees? If you wish, you can stop this video and think of the answer. The volume of 10 1 rupee coins is 20 milliliters. Therefore, the volume of a 100 1 rupee coins will be 20 times 10 or 200 milliliters. And the volume of 10 5 rupee coins is 40 milliliters. So, the volume of 100 5 rupee coins will be 40 times 10 or 400 milliliters. Raju, come, let's quickly go to the market and buy one box having a volume of 200 milliliters and one box having a volume of 400 milliliters. Both the friends excitedly walked towards the market. Children, in this video we learned about estimation and verification of volume of containers by some interesting examples. In the next video, we will look at some of the misconceptions related to this. Kids, in this video, we will learn about volume of solid shapes. In the previous video, we saw how Babban used two boxes and brought 118 compass boxes from the city to sell in his shop. And children, do you remember that the volume of each compass box is equal to 96 centimeter cube? Let's see what Babban is doing with these compass boxes. If I make beautiful shapes using these compass boxes and keep them in my shop, then I will attract people and their sales will also increase. Thinking about that idea, Babban first made a shape like this by using those compass boxes. But 
what will be the total volume of all the compass boxes that come in this ship? Babban started thinking. Let's first figure out the number of compass boxes being used in this ship. The lowest layer of this ship has four vertical rows and each row has four compass boxes. That means four rows multiplied by four boxes that is 16 boxes in the lowest layer. The layer above it has three vertical lines and each vertical line has three compass boxes. This means the second layer has 3 times 3 that is 9 compass boxes. The third layer has 2 vertical lines and each line has 2 compass boxes. This means 2 times 2 that is 4 compass boxes in the third layer. And finally, the fourth layer has just one compass box. Thus, to find the total number of compass boxes in this shape, we need to add the number of compass boxes that are included in all these layers. So, in this shape, by adding 16 plus 9 plus 4 plus 1, we get 30 compass boxes. Children, if the volume of each compass box is equal to 96 centimeter cube, can you find out how many centimeter cubes will be the total volume of all compass boxes being used in this shape? If you want, you can stop the video and find the answer. The volume of a compass box is equal to 96 centimeters cube. And Babban has used a total of 30 compass boxes in this shape. To find the volume of the total number of compass boxes being used in the shape created by Babban, we will have to multiply the volume of one compass box by the number of total compass boxes. In this way, the volume of all the compass boxes being used in the shape made by Babban will be 96 by 30, 2880 centimeter cube. Seeing this shape made by Babban, many people started getting attracted towards his shop and gradually the sales of his compass boxes increased. Children, in this video, we learned about volume of solid shapes. In the next video, we will learn more about it by some interesting examples. In the previous video, we learned about volume of solid shapes. In this video, we will learn more about it by some interesting examples. When Golu went to the city, he saw very tall buildings there. Why don't I build such a tall building in Champapur? Golu thought about it and started designing the building. To make each house unique, I will make it cube shaped. The sides of each house will be 3 meters long. He thought. So kids, can you guess what will be the volume of the house? If you wish, you can stop the video and think of the answer. The cube-shaped house has a length of 3 meters. This means that the first layer of the house will have 
3 times 3, 9 meter cubes. And because the house is cube shaped, its height will also be 3 meters. In other words, a cube shaped house will have 3 layers made up of cubic meters. The volume of each layer is equal to 9 meters cubed. This means the total volume of a cubic shaped house will be 9 times 3 that is equal to 27 cubic meters. Well, the volume of each house is equal to 27 cubic meters. If I build 6 houses on each floor of the building, how many cubic meters will be the total volume of the lowest floor? The volume of each house is equal to 27 cubic meters and there are 6 such houses on each floor. This will mean the total volume of the lowest floor will be 6 times 27 that is 162 cubic meters and if I make 12 floors in my building the total volume of my building will be equal to how many cubic meters? Kids, can you help Golu find the answer to this question? Find the answer quickly by stopping the video. The volume of each floor of the building is equal to 162 cubic meters and there are 12 such floors in the building. This would mean the volume of the entire building will be 162 multiplied by 12 that is 1944 meters cube. Gulu built his building and the people of Champapur started living happily in that building. Children, in this video we learned about the volume of solid shapes by some interesting examples. In the next video, we will look at some of the misconceptions related to this. Hello kids, in the previous video, we learned more about volume of solid shapes. In this video, we will see some of the misconceptions related to this. A new company has started production of juice in Champapur. This company has advertised that people of Champapur will have to make a unique shape using juice cartons. Whoever makes a shape of the juice carton having the highest volume will win the prize. All the villagers made different sizes using juice cartons. But what is this fight between Appu and Bhola? Oh, the owner of the company, Tarru the frog has declared both Appu and Bhola as winners. So now, both of them are fighting over how can that be possible? Look at how wide my size is as compared to Bhola's shape. It means a lot of volume of juice would fit in the boxes of this shape. The reward should only be given to me. Appu told company owner Tarru. No, my size is much longer than the size of Appu. So the total volume of the juice of the cartons that I am using will be more than the total volume of the juice of the box made by Appu. Only I should get that reward. Bhola said, Look, look, let me explain to you both. Each juice box is cuboid shape with the length of 10 cm, width of 4 cm, 
and a height of 3 cm. That means the bottom layer of each juice box, that is, the length times the width is 10 times 4, which is equal to 40 square centimeters. And because the height of the box is 3 centimeters, there will be 3 such layers. This means the volume of one can of juice will be 40 multiplied by 3. That is 120 centimeters cubed. Taru the frog explained to Appu and Bhola. Appu, how many juice boxes have you used in your shape? Taru the frog asked Appu. Fifty boxes, Appu quickly said. This means the total volume of juice being used in your shape of container will be 50 times the volume of a box. 50 times 120, that is equal to 6000 centimeters cubed. Hola! How many boxes have you used in your shape? Taru asked Bola. I have used 50 boxes too. Bola told Taru. Appo, can you now tell us how many centimeters cubed of total volume of juice is being used in the shape made by Bola? Taru asked Appo. 50 cartons have also been used in Bhola shape. So the total volume of juice used in his shape will also be equal to 120 multiplied by 50. That is 6000 centimeter cubed. Oh, good. Now I get it. Even though Appu and my shapes look different, but because we have used the same number of boxes, the total volume of the juice boxes used in our shapes is exactly the same. Bhola told Taru. The two friends understood the point. Both of them together happily shared the prize in half. Children, in this video, we have seen some misconceptions related to volume of solid shapes. Hello kids, in this video we will learn to measure cube and cuboid. Gagu has brought such cube shaped blocks to sell in his shop. All the sides of each cube shaped block are of measure 1 cm. I will pack and sell them in a cube shaped box. On thinking this, Gagu bought cube shaped boxes. But how many cubes of dimension 1 cm? will fit in each box? Gagu started thinking. Gagu then measured the length of the edge of one of those cube-shaped boxes. Okay, the length of this cube-shaped box is 10 centimeters and the sides of each cube-shaped block are 1 cm. That means the length of this box is equal to 10 cubes. Now I will measure the width of this box. The width is also 10 cm, which means that the width of this box is also equal to 10 cubes. Now, Gagu measured the height of the box. The height of the box 
is also 10 cm. That means the height of the box is equal to 10 cubes of dimension 1 cm each. Or let's find out first how many cubes of dimension 1 cm would be there in one layer of the box. 10 cubes will come in the length of the box and also 10 cubes in its width. It means one layer will have 10 times 10 or 100 cubes of dimension 1 cm each and there will be 10 such layers in the box. It means this cube shaped box will contain 100 times 10 or 1000 cubes of 1 cm dimension. Because the thickness of the cardboard is negligible, the total space occupied by the cubes in the box will be equal to the total space occupied by the box. But the total space occupied by any object is its volume. The volume of the box will be equal to the cubes placed in it. This means that the volume of this cube shaped box is equal to 1000 cubes. Gagu packed 1000 blocks in the cube shaped boxes each and started selling them. Within a few days, Gagu's blocks became famous in the market. Now Gagu thought that he would sell these blocks in cuboid shaped boxes. Children, if the length, width and height of cuboid shaped box purchased by Gagu are as shown, can you tell how many cubes of dimension 1 cm each will be there in the volume of each cuboid shaped box? If you want, you can stop the video and find the answer. There are 12 cubes of dimension 1 cm each in the length of the cuboid shaped box. This means that the length of the cuboid shaped box will be equal to 12 cubes of dimension 1 cm each. In the same way, the width of a cuboid shaped box is 5 cm which will be equal to 5 cubes of dimension 1 cm each and the height of the cuboid shaped box is 4 cm which will be equal to 4 cubes of dimension 1 cm each. This means that this box will have 4 layers made up of cubes of dimension 1 cm each there will be 12 cubes in the length of the box and 5 cubes in the width. Therefore, one layer of cuboid shaped box will have 12 times 5, 60 cubes of dimension 1 cm each and because the box will have 4 such layers, the box will have a total of 60 times 4. 240 cubes of dimension 1 cm each. In other words, the volume of this cuboid shaped box will be equal to 240 cubes of dimension 1 cm each. Gagu filled the blocks in his cuboid shaped new box and his blocks became even more popular. Children, in this video, we learn to measure cube and cuboid. In the next video, we will learn more about it through some interesting examples.
kids in the previous video we learned to measure cube and cuboid in this video we will learn more about it through some interesting examples babban wants to buy compass boxes to sell in his shop the compass boxes are cuboid shaped i have just brought this one cube and one cuboid shaped box with me how many compass boxes will i be able to carry in these two boxes babban began to think he had a few cube shaped blocks of 1 cm each that he had bought from gaggu's shop oh wow i can first use these cubes to find the volume of a compass box he measures the length width and height of the compass box the compass box is 8 cm long this means the length of this compass box is equal to 8 cubes of dimension 1 cm each and its width is 4 cm or equal to 4 cubes of dimension 1 cm each one layer of a compass box will have number of cubes in its length times the cubes in its width that is 8 multiplied by 4 32 cubes of dimension 1 cm each now in the end the height of the compass box is 3 cm this means that there are three such layers of cubes of dimension for 1 cm each that means each box would have a total of 32 times 3 96 cubes of dimension 1 cm each in other words the volume of a compass box is equal to 96 cubes of dimension 1 cm each well the volume of a compass box is equal to 96 cubes of dimension 1 cm each now the length of this cuboid shaped box is 32 cm or 32 cubes of dimension 1 cm each its width is 30 cm or 30 cubes of dimension 1 cm each this means that in one layer of this box there are its length times width or 32 times 30 960 cubes of dimension 1 cm each the height of this box is 10 cm it means there will be 10 such layers of cubes of dimension 1 cm each the box will have a total of 960 times 10 9600 cubes of dimension 1 cm each in other words the volume of this cuboid shaped box is equal to 9600 cm cubes the volume of a compass box is equal to 96 cm cubes and the volume of this cuboid shaped box is equal to 9600 cm cubes therefore in this box 9600 divided by 96 that is 100 compass boxes will be there children if the edges of babban's cube shaped box are 12 cm each then can you tell how many compass boxes will babban be able to keep in this box if you want you can find the solution by stopping the video this box is cube shaped so its first layer 
will contain 12 times 12. 144 cubes of dimension 1 centimeter each. The height of this box is also 12 centimeters. Or this box will have 12 such layers of cubes of dimension 1 centimeter each. Therefore, this box will contain 144 times 12, 1728 cubes of dimension 1 centimeter each. In other words, the volume of this cube shaped box is equal to 1728 centimeter cubes. The volume of a compass box is equal to 96 centimeter cubes. So, 1728 divided by 96. 18 compass boxes can be placed in this cube shaped box. I can take a total of 118 compass boxes to sell in my shop by filling both these boxes. Babban filled 118 compass boxes in those boxes and began walking towards the village. Children, in this video, we learned about measuring cube and cuboid through some interesting examples. In the next video, we will look at some of the misconceptions related to this. Hello kids, in the previous video, we learned more about measuring cube and cuboid. In this video, we will see some of the misconceptions related to this. Golu bought a lot of 1 cm cube blocks from Gaggu's shop. Golu and his friends played with those blocks and had a lot of fun. All friends returned to their respective homes. Only Shere Khan stayed to help Golu. Now, Golu is thinking that he will fill those blocks in the boxes so that he and his friends can play with them again sometime. Golu, let me help you fill these blocks in boxes. You bring the boxes quickly. Shere Khan told Golu. I have this cube shaped box and this cuboid shaped box. Since cuboid is larger than cube, so the volume of cuboid will be larger than the volume of the cube. Let us first fill the blocks in this cuboid shaped box, then we will put the remaining blocks in the cube shaped box. <laughs> It is not necessary that the volume of the cube shape is always less than the volume of the cuboid. See, the length of this cuboid shaped box is 8 cm and the width is 4 cm. This means that the first layer of this cuboid shaped box will have length into width 8 times 4, 32 cubes of dimension, 1 cm each and its height is 2 cm. That means there would be 2 such layers. We will be able to place a total of 32 times 2, 64 cubes of dimension, 1 cm each in the cuboid shaped box. In other words, the volume of the cuboid shaped box is equal to 64 cm cubes. I will find the volume of this cube shaped box. Shere Khan, the sides of the cube shaped box are 4 cm each. This means the first layer will have 4 times 4, 16 cubes of dimension, 1 cm each and its height is 4 cm. It means there will be 4 layers. We will be able to place 16 times 4, 
64 cubes of dimension 1 cm each in the cube shaped box in other words the volume of this cube shaped box is equal to 64 cm cubes hey the volume of these two boxes is exactly the same Shir Khan you are absolutely right it is not necessary that the volume of cube is always less than the volume of cuboid come on now golu let us quickly fill 64 cubes in each of these two boxes and then we will go out to play golu and shir khan together filled those blocks in both boxes and the two friends went out to play children in this video we saw some misconceptions related to measuring cube and cuboid hello children in this video we will learn about weight and its units One day the king of Champapur was wandering in the forest. Be careful. That thorn is about to prick the feet of the king. What is going to happen now? Wait, my king. Hearing this, the king immediately stopped. Hey. Where did this voice come from? The king thought. Then his eyes went on that little ant on the ground. You saved my leg from getting pricked by this thorn. I'll reward you with sugar equal to your weight. But what is this weight, my king? The ant asked the king. The king laughed and said, <laughs> "Weight tells you how heavy an object is." Saying this, The king immediately asked for a weighing scale. When the ant stood on that weighing scale, its weight showed as 100 mg on the weighing scale. Kids, do you know what milligram is? Milligram is the smallest unit of weight measurement. The king was about to order to bring 100 mg of sugar when the ant said, But my king there are 20 ants who drew my attention to that thorn and gave me a signal to stop you they too should be entitled for the reward now the king immediately weighed those 20 ants 20 ants weigh 2000 mg children Do you know that 1000 mg is equal to 1 g? So, how many grams would 2000 mg equal to? That's right. 2000 divided by 1000, 2 g. Now, the king was about to get 2 g of sugar when the ant once again spoke. Thousand ants who were watching over you, all the way for your protection, and who signaled these twenty ants for your protection. They should also be entitled to the reward. Now the king weighed those ten thousand ants. Children, see ten thousand ants weigh one thousand grams. And do you know another fun thing? 1000 grams is equal to 1 kilogram or 1 kilo this means 10000 ants weigh 1 kilo the king was very impressed by the unity and wit of the ants he gave 10 kilograms of sugar to the ants and resumed his walk the ants were very happy on getting 10 kilos of sugar as they would not have to work hard in the cold weather children in this video we learned about weight and its units in the next video 
we will learn more about it by some interesting examples. In the last video, we learned about weight and its units. In this video, we will learn more about it by some interesting examples. Raju's mother asked him to buy 1450 grams of paneer and 2 grams of saffron from Appu's shop. Raju kept playing on the way and finally reached Appu's shop. I want 2 grams of paneer and 1450 grams of saffron, Raju told Appu. Appu laughed. <laughs> you mean 1450 grams of paneer and 2 grams of saffron? Raju could not understand anything. Appu then placed 2 grams of paneer on a weighing scale and said to Raju, Look, Raju, will your mother be able to make any dish using it? No, uh, looks like I swapped the units of these two items. Now Raju read on the board on Appu's shop, Paneer 200 rupees kilograms. Oh no, mother had asked me to bring 1450 grams of paneer. How many kilograms would that be? Children, can you tell how many kilograms will be equal to 1450 grams? 1000 grams is equal to 1 kilogram. So, to find out how many kilograms is equal to 1450 grams, we only have to divide 1450 by 1000. We can divide 1450 by 1000 in this way. Now it is very easy. Whatever number is written here on top is in kilogram and the remaining number are the remaining grams. This means 1450 grams is 1 kilogram and 450 grams. Children, remember that whenever we have to express the number written in a small unit to a larger unit, we use the process of division. Okay, I have to buy 1 kilogram and 450 grams of paneer. Now, the cost of saffron is written in milligrams here. So, how many milligrams will be equal to 2 grams of saffron? Children, can you help Raju find an answer to this question? If you wish, you can stop the video and think of the answer. 1 gram is equal to 1000 milligrams. So, to convert 2 grams to milligrams, we multiply 2 by 1000. In this way, 2 grams of saffron is equal to 2000 milligrams. Children, remember, whenever we have to express a larger unit, in a smaller unit, then we will use the process of multiplication. Raju bought paneer and saffron from Appu and returned home. Children, in this video, we learned about weight and its units through some interesting examples. In the next video, we will look at some of the misconceptions related to this. Hello kids! In the last video, we learned about weight and its units. In this video, 
we will look at some of the misconceptions related to this. Golu has come to the market to buy apples. First, he went to Babban's fruit stall. Babban, give me apples for 50 rupees, please. Golu said to Babban. Babban placed some apples on his weighing scale like this. Golu, you will get 1000 grams apples for 50 rupees. Babban told Golu. 1000 grams! So many apples! Golu got excited by the thought. He quickly gave Babban 50 rupees and took his apples and started shopping in the market. After a while, Golu thought, I got so many apples for only 50 rupees. Let me buy more apples for 50 rupees. Thinking this, Golu went to Bunny's fruit stall next to him. Bunny, give me apples for 50 rupees, please. Golu said to Bunny. Bunny put a weight of 1 kilogram in one plate of his weighing scale and weighed apples in the other plate until the two plates came to the same level. Then Bunny said to Golu, Here you are, one kilogram of apples for 50 rupees. Golu furiously said to Bunny, This is sheer loot, Bunny. At Babban's fruit stall, I got 1000 gram apples for 50 rupees. And you are giving me only one kilogram of apples for 50 rupees. One thousand is much smaller than one. Then how can you give me less apples at the same price? Then Bunny laughed and said to Golu, <laughs> Calm down, my friend. Calm down. I will explain to you. Look. Babban gave you 1000 gram apples and Golu 1000 grams is equal to how many kilograms? Hmm, uh, 1 kilogram. Well, that means you and Babban have given me apples of the same weight. Absolutely right. Remember Golu. Whenever you want to compare the weight of anything, first you write down their weight in the same units. Only then you will be able to compare them correctly. Gulu understood what Bunny explained and he happily returned home after buying apples from Bunny. Children, in this video we saw some misconceptions related to weight and its units. Hello kids! In this video, we will learn to solve word problems based on weight. Due to opening of fast food stalls in Champapur, the weight of the villagers is increasing day by day. Due to increasing weight, the villagers are suffering a lot. Golu, Bhola and Chanda decided that they would try to lose their weight. Golu, Chanda, let's first measure our weight so that we can measure our weight again. After a few days, we can know whether our efforts have succeeded or not. Bhola told Golu and Chanda. First, I will weigh myself. Bhola stood on the weighing scale saying this. Oh my God, my weight has increased to 120 kilos. Bhola <gasps> said in shock. Let me take my weight now. Golu said, and stood on the weighing scale. My weight is one and a half times your weight. Golu said to Bhola, Children, can you tell how much does Golu weigh? 
Golu's weight is one and a half times Bhola's weight, and Bhola weighs one hundred and twenty kilograms. So, to find Golu's weight, we have to multiply Bhola's weight by three by two, or one point five. Children, do you remember the process of multiplying decimal numbers that we learned? Let us do this multiplication quickly. Golu weighs one hundred and eighty kilograms. One hundred and eighty kilogram. I will faint. Let me quickly measure my weight. Chanda said to Golu and Bola and stood on the weighing scale. I can't believe my eyes. My weight has become one sixth of Bola's weight. At first, I was much less than this. Chanda told Golu and Bhola. Children, can you find out how many kilograms does Chanda weigh? If you want, you can stop the video and think about the answer. Chanda's weight is one sixth of Bhola's weight. This means that to find the weight of Chanda, we have to divide Bhola's weight by six. In this way, the weight of Chanda is one hundred and twenty divided by six. That is twenty kilograms. The three of us have gained so much weight. From now on, we will eat only nutritious things, and we will completely stop visiting the fast food stalls. Golu told Bhola and Chanda. The three friends started eating nutritious things, and slowly they started losing weight. Children, in this video, we learned to solve word problems based on weight. In the next video, we will see some more interesting examples of this. Hello kids. In the previous video, we learned to solve word problems based on weight. In this video, we will see some more interesting examples based on this. A unique competition between Golu Panda and Gaggu Hippopotamus has been organized today in Champapur. I like moti chur laddu. I will only eat moti chur laddu. Golu said, "I like besan laddus. I will only eat besan laddus." Said Gagu. Both of you will be given one minute to eat laddus. Whoever is able to eat more laddus in one minute will win the competition. Said Baban, the organizer of the competition. The competition started. See how fast Golu and Gaggu are eating laddus. The time is up. Let's see who ate how many laddus. Baban told the audience. Hey, what is this? Both Golu and Gaggu have eaten exactly twenty laddus. Now, how will we find out? Who is the winner? Said Babban. Appu, an expert on all sweets, said, "The weight of both the laddus are different because both have eaten the same number of laddus. We only have to find out the weight of one moti chur laddu and one besan laddu." But Appu, how will we find out? Baban asked Appu. It is very easy. Look, there are forty laddus in one kilo of moti chur laddus. It means one moti chur laddu will weigh one kilo divided by forty. But one kilo is equal to one thousand grams. So. One moti chur laddu will weigh a thousand divided by forty, 
That is 25 grams. Children, if there are 25 laddus in a kilogram of besan laddus, can you tell how much a besan laddu will weigh? If you want, you can stop the video and think about the answer. There are 25 laddus in 1 kilogram of besan laddus. This means the weight of one besan laddu will be 1 kilogram divided by 25. 1 kilogram is equal to 1000 grams. So, the weight of one besan laddu will be 1000 divided by 25. 40 grams. Well, a moti chur laddu weighs 25 grams and a besan laddu weighs 40 grams. So, a besan laddu is heavier than a moti chur laddu. That means the weight of laddus that Gaggu ate is more than the weight of laddus that Golu ate. The winner of this competition is Gaggu. Babban told the audience. All the spectators started cheering loudly for the contest winner, Gaggu. Children, in this video, we learned how to solve weight-based word problems by some interesting examples. In the next video, we will see some more interesting examples related to this. Hello kids! In the previous video, we learned to solve word problems based on weight by some interesting examples. In this video, we will see some more interesting examples related to this. Banno's designer saris have become famous worldwide. Banno is thinking that she will send her saris abroad through the airline of Chappu Travels. Banno has come to the office of Chappu Travels to inquire about this. Chanda, I want to send my saris abroad. How much money will it cost me? Look, Banno, we take money according to the weight of the parcel. For a 5 kg parcel, you have to pay 500 rupees. Chanda told Banno. Now, Banno is thinking, one of my saris weighs 500 grams. So, how many saris will I be able to send in a 5 kilogram parcel? Children, can you tell that if a sari of Banno weighs 500 grams, how many saris will she be able to send in a parcel of 5 kilograms? First, we will write 5 kilograms in grams. 1 kilogram is equal to 1000 grams. So, 5 kilograms, 5 times 1000 will be equal to 5000 grams. Now, Banno has a sari of 500 grams. So, to find out how many saris will be in 5000 grams, we will divide 5000 by 500. 5000 divided by 500 is 10. In this way, Banno will be able to send 10 saris in a 5 kilograms parcel. Banno put 10 saris in a box and sent them overseas through Chappu Travels. Banno saris became very famous even abroad. Now, Banno is thinking that she will send 50 saris abroad this time. Children, can you tell how many kilograms the total weight of these 50 saris will be? If you want, you can stop the video 
and think about the answer. A sari weighs 500 grams. To find the weight of 50 saris, we have to multiply the weight of one sari by 50. 500 multiplied by 50. 25,000 grams. Now, what will we do to express it in kilograms? Exactly! We will divide 25,000 by 1,000. 25,000 divided by 1,000 is 25. In this way, the total weight of 50 saris of Banno will be 25 kilograms. Banno sent parcels of 50 of her saris abroad and Banno's saris became famous all over the world. Children, in this video, we saw some more interesting examples related to solving word problems on weight. Hello friends, welcome to today's lesson on money. Today we will learn the usage of money in our daily life along with Sham. We will also learn how to take a loan from the bank on interest when we need money. Ramu, Sunita and Sham are having dinner together. Sunita, I was thinking to open a stationery shop, but I have only rupees 10,000. How can I arrange the rest of the money? We can make using of the money that we started saving 2000 every month almost 15 months back. How much do you think we have saved in total? Multiply 15 by 2000. If we multiply 15 by 2000, we get 30,000 rupees. That means we have a total of 10,000 plus 30,000. That is equal to 40,000 rupees. But I need rupees 1 lakh for this purpose. That means we have to borrow 60,000 rupees from somewhere. Why don't we take a loan from the bank? But we have to pay interest on that money. Yes, of course we have to pay. But we can pay it when we start making profit. Dad, what is a loan? Why will the bank give us a loan? My son, if anybody needs money, they can take a loan from the bank. And in return, they have to pay some extra money along with the money taken from the bank. That extra money is called interest. Bank gives a loan because they will earn interest on the money they loan us. But dad, how do we know the amount of interest that we have to pay? Look, if I take 60,000 rupees to start my work and I have to pay 64,800 rupees after one year, then how much interest I have to pay? You can pause the video if you want and think about it. If we subtract 60,000 from 64,800, we get 4,800. That means you have to pay 4,800 rupees as interest. But dad, how do we know the amount we have to pay in a month? How many months are there in a year? 12. Since I've taken the loan for one year, we will divide the total amount by 12. Then tell me, how much do we get if we divide 64,800 by 12? You can pause the video if you want and think about it. Five thousand and four hundred. Absolutely correct. So that means if we take a loan of rupees sixty thousand, which is our principal amount, and we have to repay sixty four thousand eight hundred rupees in one year, then we have to deposit five thousand four hundred rupees every month in the bank which is also called an installment. Oh wow dad, this is very interesting. Then I will take a loan from the bank to open a toy shop when I grow up and I will play with lots of toys. Okay my son. So friends, in today's video, we have learned the usage of money in our daily life and we can take a loan from the bank when we need money. Thank you.
Hello friends, welcome to this video. In the previous video, we learned how Ramu and his family were thinking about taking a loan from the bank to start a new venture. Today we will see how Ramu and Sham are purchasing things for their shop. So, our work has finally started. Today I will go to market to buy things for my shop. That is why I have made the list too. Dad, how did you find out how much money is needed to start a stationery shop? Can you tell me? Son, before starting any work, we need to make a list of things we need for that work. Using that list, we will be able to identify how much money is needed to start the work. For instance, I made this list. I have entered the number of items I need, but I need to enter the amount. Then I will get to know how much money is required to buy the things. How is that, Dad? Suppose one book costs rupees 20 and I want to buy 5 in total. Then how much money is required to buy the books? 20 multiplied by 5, that is 100 rupees. Oh, wow, Dad! Come on, let us go and buy things and see how much money do we really need. How are you Mohan? I want these things to open my shop. Tell me the cost of these things. Uh, Brother Ramu, one book costs rupees 40 and one pen costs rupees 10. Look Sham, the shopkeeper told us the cost of one item. Now can you tell me the total cost? The cost of books is 40 into 100, that is 4000 rupees. Cost of pen is 10 into 150, that is 1500 rupees. The total cost is 4000 plus 1500, that is 5500. Yes, that's how we find out the total cost. Okay, now take one fourth of the books we bought and give them to your uncle and ask him to pay rupees 1500 for them. Okay, Dad. But first tell me how many books you will give him. You can pause the video if you want and think about it. Hundred divided by four is twenty-five. So I will give twenty-five books to him. But dad, twenty-five books cost thousand rupees and we are taking one thousand five hundred rupees from uncle. Yes, son. This is the profit. When we buy an item at a lesser price and sell it at a higher price, then we will get a profit. If we sell the books costing 1000 rupees for 1500 rupees, then our profit is rupees 500. Oh, wow, dad. This is very interesting. Sham stopped at grocery store while coming back home. His mother had told him to buy 4 kgs of flour, for which she gave him 200 rupees. Shopkeeper told him that the cost of 1 kg of flour is 45 rupees. Sham wasn't sure if the money he had would be enough. What is your opinion? Will Sham be able to buy the flour in the given money? Or will he need more? Think for a while. You can pause the video if you want. If the cost of 1 kg flour is 45 rupees, so the cost of 4 kgs of flour would be 4 times 45, that is 180 rupees. That means Sham can easily buy 4 kgs of flour from the money given and he will be left with 20 rupees. In this video, we have learned about finding the total cost and finding the profit along with Sham and Ramu. Thank you. Hello friends, welcome to this video. Today we will learn some interesting aspects about interest along with Bubbly and her friend Meena. Come on Bubbly, let us go and play. No Meena, I need to help my dad because he is starting a new business related to books. Oh wow Bubbly, then we can buy the books only from your dad's shop. Why not, Meena? For sure. 
You know, yesterday my dad was saying that he is going to start a new business of candles, but he doesn't have enough money, so he had to take a loan from the bank. You know, my dad also took a loan from the bank. Bubbly, do you know that we have to pay a huge amount of interest to the bank? My dad took a loan of twenty-five thousand rupees, and he has to pay twenty-seven thousand and five hundred as interest. But my dad doesn't need to pay that much. Then why does your dad have to pay so much? Come on, let us ask my dad. Dad, Meena's dad took twenty-five thousand rupees loan. Then why does he need to pay twenty-seven thousand and five hundred rupees as interest? No, my girl, he won't be paying twenty-seven thousand five hundred rupees as interest. Twenty-seven thousand five hundred is the total amount which is to be paid along with principal. What does that mean, Uncle? Look, your dad has taken twenty-five thousand rupees loan, and he has to repay rupees twenty-seven thousand five hundred to the bank. Out of twenty-seven thousand five hundred, the principal is twenty-five thousand, which is taken as loan. Then what is the interest? You can pause the video here if you want and think about it. Twenty-seven thousand and five hundred minus twenty-five thousand is equal to two thousand five hundred. That means the interest is only rupees twenty five hundred, because total outstanding amount is principal plus interest. Okay, uncle. I was thinking that bank will take more amount than principal from us. But dad, your interest on loan is four thousand and eight hundred rupees, and their interest on loan is two thousand and five hundred rupees only. Why do we need to pay more interest? Because interest changes according to the loan amount. The interest depends upon the amount of loan taken from the bank. We need to pay lower interest for lesser amount and higher interest for more amount. So, friends, along with Bubbly and Meena, today we have learned how to find out the total outstanding amount. By adding principal amount and interest, and we also learned that the interest amount changes according to the loan amount. Thank you.